I wanted to start by saying, uh, you know, classical Hollywood cinema was not always kind to BIPOC people. And uh, especially uh, Black performers were contained to the stage. But you get to play this character who shows that, but also then gets a narrative. And I wonder if you would talk a little bit about what that means to you to shine a light on that aspect of Hollywood. I think I, I, I approach it as a responsibility. Um, whoever Sydney represents, which is he represents a, a handful of people in that time that were experience in this moment and the shift in Hollywood for the first time. I think it was wanting to be sincere about the excitement of, of getting to feel like a trailblazer, which I think Sydney did, and, but then also feeling like I've made it, but also I still feel somewhat invisible because I'm in a league and I'm by myself. Yeah. So I think there's a there's a tenderness that um, that I tried to, to bring to Sydney, even though he was brash at times and very intense, especially musically. Um, but yeah, just wanting to be sincere and pay respects to the people who have paved the way so that, you know, myself and Lily can be on the screen and do what we love to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, your character is uh, fetishized and exoticized for being both uh, a queer and Asian woman and uh, until she's no longer useful. Uh, mm -hmm. And I wonder if you would talk a little bit about playing um, all those aspects of that, you know, the intersections of your character. Um, I think, like Jovan said, there is that responsibility to tell the story because she's also based on Anna Mae Wong, who yeah. went through very, I mean, I, close to identical things, minus the fact that she was not a title card uh, writer. Um, but I, I, it was important to me that we told not just her story that you see and read about, but to be able to convey these feelings so that the audience that views this, um, views seeing her can feel exactly what she's going through. You know, the beginning of the film is just this Bacchanalian wild, <laughs> the choreography involved. And I wonder if you would each speak to what that was like to be a part of and to shoot. It, it just uh, looked like so difficult actually to shoot. Definitely was. I mean, you would think hearing like, it was a three week party. You're like, yes, that's amazing. But I mean, it, it was fun, but it's exhausting yeah. because, you know, but that's also what you sign up for. I mean, we, we wanted to be in this movie with Damien and you know that he's, mm -hmm. he wants it and he wants it right. And it's, mm -hmm. it's going to play well. And he wants well. a thousand percent every time. A thousand percent every yeah. time. And I think everybody that was on camera that you saw, they were all committed to that. Right, mm -hmm. like every day, and we shot that scene for uh, 10, 10 days, ten to twelve yeah, days, it was something like, like that. Wow, yeah. it was like two weeks. It two was, weeks of, <laughs> of partying. I mean, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean, true. It, it was probably not as much of a party by the end. <laughs> no, it felt no, like it, it was, was because, because we, you know, yeah. every time um, action was was screamed, everybody mm -hmm. just, you know, went right. I mean, it was a real party. People were. Uh, so committed yeah. and we really were having fun and yeah. I think that's what made it possible for us to sustain that amazing well yeah. thank you and then also I just uh, I had forgotten that you get this really lovely moment where you get to kind of recreate Morocco oh, yeah. uh, and I wonder if you just talk a little bit about that and playing Marlena Dietrich for a moment yeah um in the uh, three months before we went into production I did like a three-day intensive Jovan was there as well uh, with Damien where we just sat down and we uh, talked about the character, how we wanted her to sound. There was a moment, there there were days where we wanted Faye to sound very airy and graceful. Mm -hmm. And then when we were on set, he was like, actually, actually, no. And then we brought it down by two octaves. Um, and uh, the uh, he showed me a bunch of scenes um, from the great classics where it had inspired him to do many of the scenes in our film. And one of which, was the scene from Morocco with Marlena. And then uh, I wonder, were there, I mean, you mentioned that you wanted to pay homage to mm -hmm. people who came before you, but were there specific performers in mind when you were uh, performing in Babylon? Uh, Curtis Mosby was, was an earlier influence that Damien brought to my attention, but as far as like any specific characteristics, as far as like cadence of voice and walking and things like that, there was no specific person. Mm -hmm. I just remember that Damien and I had spent like the first couple hours on the phone, once he had offered me the part, just talking about jazz music yeah. and just talking about some of our favorite artists. And I actually shared with him, it was a, um, not a podcast, but it was a, um, a, a round table uh, on Charlie Rose. And it was with uh, Stanley Crouch, um, Wynn Marsalis and Robert Greene. And they just had mm -hmm. like a round table discussion about the responsibility of jazz music as a genre and what it meant to them. And I kind of used their conversation to, to build who I thought Sydney would be. Mm -hmm. 